This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Step one, open the data table, go to the dogs table and follow the instructions from your teacher and on your activity guide. So yep, you should have your activity guide. Here's mine here, I have the digital. Make a bar chart for each column in the dog data set and categorize it as either useful or not useful by placing the column name in the table below. So useful, not useful. And then I think we're gonna need the data tab because paste one of the columns that you believe is useful below. So let's, here we are and data. Now data tab we're in and dogs. So we're gonna need to visualize our data, right? Because if we're pasting a chart, we're gonna visualize it. Let's go ahead and do whoop, visualize, visualize <laughs> um, and chart type. It's at a bar chart, so I'll go there. And then let's start with the ID. And you're just kind of taking a look at what you think, right? Does this seem super useful, the ID? Well, I believe every item has its own ID column, its own ID in this column. So they're all different. So no, I wouldn't say that's particularly useful. I about name. Well, no, every dog's gonna have a different, every dog breed has a different name. So there's only one of each of those as well. Okay, how about breed group? Oh, interesting, right? Maybe this would be a bit more useful since that it's actually providing us a visual representation of something that could come in handy if we're interested in purchasing dogs or researching them. So I might say uh, dog breed, and then we could do a filter, but it didn't ask for that. View a snapshot of it, and look, I can go ahead created by yada yada yada, and this is copy this image. Okay, I'm gonna go to my other tab here and just right click and paste. There we are. And so I think that's useful. And what were the ones that I already went through? I would just put them there, right? I was thinking, and you are gonna need to do this on your own, and you might have different answers, honestly. If you think one's really useful that someone else doesn't, you don't, you could be right. It depends on where the data is uh, being, well, being used and how it's interpreted. Dog breed, I thought was useful. I didn't think ID was, right? At least not for a chart or the, make a bar chart. So what is useful as a chart? Name, I didn't think that's super useful in a chart. And just keep going here, right? Do you think these different aspects are useful, right? This is a bit hard to read, but maybe, right? A lot of these is only one thing, but it does show you, right? Or how about height? What do you think is gonna give you a lot of information or provide solid information that isn't overwhelming? You wanna think about the usability of these graphs, so. Temperature, for instance, that doesn't seem super useful, right? But these things that are going to like maximum lifespan, well, that seems interesting to kind of view how this is working. So I would add that one too. You just want to go through those and be thinking about that max lifespan. All right. Now make sure you go through those to finish that off. Let's take a look what else. That's a lot of extra space. Question. What's one piece of information someone could learn from the chart that you pasted? Well, and this is gonna vary by your chart, but for instance, I, kn I could learn that working dogs seem to be the most common breed. Let's check what this data is though, before we say this. Okay, so look at all these breeds. So I doubt it has every in the world, but it has a significant amount of breeds. So. I'm going to say something about that. Working dogs are the most common of breeds, at least in the data provided, right? And then I could I could keep going here. It looks like hound and sporting dogs are also very popular, right? It, you're just interpreting what you put here. If you put lifespan, you can make a judgment based on that. Do you notice any patterns which in which charts are or are not useful? Well, I kind of highlighted some of that, right? The charts that are going to be least useful, all the ones that have like ID or name, right? If if the data is unique and individual, why would that chart be useful? Also, a chart that might be less useful is a chart that almost everything is, I, is unique, but one thing is different. Or a chart with everything that is the same. Say it's what for what say it's a bar chart on the dogs on which are dogs well that'd be one bar of just everyone's a dog so think about is the data unique completely 
not unique, how can it be judged differently in graph form? Those are what you want to think of when thinking about that answer. Histogram. Make a histogram of max weight column of dog's data set and choose the bucket size. Okay, max weight, we choose the bucket size. Think, uh, oh, we choose that we think's the best for interpreting data. Okay, well, let's head back here and we need to change this to histogram and then max weight. And then let me pick a bucket size one. Now keep in mind, one of the things with the histogram that's nice is you want the data to be touching, right? You want all these bars to be kind of mushed together. You want a continual progression of data. It's good for comparisons to have that data viewable without gaps. We can see patterns and distinctions easy, easily with that. So let me see. Five is obviously not enough. How about 10? You see these two gaps? So I'm going to keep going. What about 15? Mm, 20? Oh, so 20 is looking pretty good, and we've eliminated all of the gaps. So I'll stick with that. That looks like a good histogram. So uh, graph of max weight. And I need to go ahead and view a snapshot. I'll just, oop, I can copy it right here. Boom, and right click paste. Bam. Cool. Okay, that's a lot of extra space. So now what do we have? What bucket size did you choose? Well, this is pretty direct. You might have chose a slightly bigger bucket size than me. Maybe you did a slightly smaller. What I would really focus on is not having gaps because histograms tend to be gapless. So I would just state this, right? My, I chose a bucket size of 20, yada, yada, yada. And why do I think it's most helpful? Well, for me, at least, I wanted it to be easily readable. You don't want too many numbers down here. And I was focusing on not having gaps because it's easier to compare and see the distribution of data without it. It's one of the benefits of a histogram. What's the most common range of maximum weights? Okay, so what for me, for my data set, it looks like this 60 to 20, right, as the most. So I'd list that there. And then the least common, well, there's no zeros. It's a histogram, so we have no gaps in our graph. Um, the least common range, well, it looks like it would be 60 to 180 for me and 200 to 220. Yours might be a slightly larger bucket, slightly smaller. That could still be workable. So mine would be, I would always write a sentence, but you know, occurred at, and I would list 160 to 180 and yada, yada, yada. All right, let's keep going. Make, hist make a histogram for one other dog data dog's data set and choose the bucket size that you think is most helpful. Cool. So keeping that in mind, I know right away, I saw lifespan. Yeah, I want a maximum lifespan. Let's do one. Oh, so there's gaps now. And again, I don't want gaps. Two. And I wonder why it leaves that there. What if we do? I mean, that's kind of workable, but I really, oh, look at this. Huh. So there's no actual gaps in the data here, as you can tell. I want to know, though, what's the minimum lifespan look? Huh. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go with this. View snapshot, copy, cool. And then, boom. And now, what bucket size did I choose? Well, I chose two because there's no gaps. It's nice to compare. What's one question the chart you created could help answer? If I'm looking for a dog that lives particularly long life, well, yeah. So you just want to think about how you can draw conclusions from this data. All right, let's take a look now. Cool and cool. So I believe we answered those questions. Let me hit run and finish on Word. Being able to interpret data like this is super important to computer and data sciences. Why would someone make a histogram instead of a bar chart? Hmm. For this, you really want to think about the use, right? So a bar chart is particularly good at good at comparing variables. It's really easy to see data and make a comparison between, I don't know, types of dogs. Whereas a histogram is going to be best at seeing the distribution of those variables, right? Seeing where the information is congregated and how it is related to each other, seeing patterns within it. So, of course, you're going to want to come up with your own answer, but why would you recommend someone to make a histogram? Um, I would say something around. And again, 
plagiarism's a thing. Make sure you're. I just want to talk about and brainstorm with this. With brainstorm, this is important stuff. All right. So, uh, histogram shows frequency of data and the distribution of it. See patterns up and down, right? Whereas a bar graph is going to tend to be a bar graph. A bar graph would be good for comparing categories such as a dog breed. One of the ways you can kind of think about a histogram too. Oh, thank you, grammar. Uh, one of the ways you can think about a histogram too is that you can't rearrange them bars in a histogram. Whereas a bar chart, if you want to put one breed at the front, it's not going to make a huge difference. So histogram, think about like histogram, how frequent something is. Most common ranges, changes to ranges. That's really what you want to be thinking about a histogram. You get to see how the data is used together and the comparison. And you're easily able to see the distribution of that data as opposed to comparing different categories of information. So make sure you come up with your own answer. And yeah, let's keep uh, going.